to an Alaskan elite paranormal school. <laughs> a little wicked, a lot wild, and all dangerous. <laughs> Just what do these, what do they mean? Tracy. This is the end of the book. Her final form in Crave. She is a Hello friends. My laundry machine just entered the noisiest part of the cycle, but I'm gonna keep going. Hello, welcome to this video. I, if this looks familiar, it's because I just finished reading the Legendborn series, um, Legendborn and Bloodmarked. If you would like to watch that video, it was the last video that I posted. Please only watch a bit of it. I tell you where the spoilers start. Do not spoil this series for yourself. Please, God, read it, okay? But that's not what we're doing today. Today, we are going to be reading a series that I have seen absolutely everywhere. So many of you guys have asked me to read it. I'm going to read it with you. I'm going to read the entire series. Is it finished? I should have checked that before. If you clicked on this, you know what we're reading. I'm reading the Crave series. I'm going to uh, read the synopsis. Uh, this is a cold read. I have never, I've never, I don't know what this book is about whatsoever. <clears throat> so here we go. My whole world changed when I stepped inside the academy. Nothing is right about this place or the students in it. Here I am, a mere mortal amongst gods or monsters. I still can't decide which of these warring factions I belong to, if I belong at all. I only know the one thing that unites them is their hatred of me. And then there's Jackson Vega. <laughs> okay, sorry. A vampire with deadly secrets who hasn't felt anything for a hundred years. I'm in, I'm in. But there's something about... <laughs> this is my first time reading this. I'm sorry, this is a very live reaction. But there's something about him that calls to me. <laughs> something broken in him that somehow fits with what's broken in me which could spell death for us all oh man because jackson walled himself off for a reason and now someone wants to wake a sleeping monster and i'm wondering if i was brought here intentionally as the bait <laughs> don't miss a single book in this series that has spawned a phenomenon the crave series is best enjoyed in the order crave crush covet court charm cherish i have to read six books it has a three and a half star rating but this is just on google books and it's also like the korean version so i don't know let me look at maybe goodreads goodreads is a 3.8 and there's over a hundred thousand reviews this is the most i've known about a book going into it in a very long time so i'm actually prepared okay crave is a young adult paranormal romance book following Grace, a girl who has just lost both of her parents and is forced to move to an elite boarding school. Uh, Crave is about a seemingly human Grace's transition into an Alaskan elite paranormal school. <sighs> it's a young adult vampire romance. Okay, guys. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna start with. And you wanna know something crazy? I'm probably gonna buy these books just so that I can read them quickly but i have the first book from the library and let me tell you why i need to read it today there is a long holds list for it and i have 19 hours left you can't see it but i have 19 hours left to read this and it's 600 pages long so let's get going shall we <laughs> a very solid start <laughs> okay i'm really excited if every single chapter is gonna be like a fallout boy lyric because my emo heart is living oh my god i'm i'm sorry that i keep like i'm literally only on page two but she's a san diego queen we love grace okay i don't care what she does in this book she's my girl okay grace i don't care what she does in this book She's my girl. I know that I'm turning on her so quickly, literally two pages later. She is talking so much crap about this tiny airport. This is so unimportant, but she's talking, she's talking shit about this airport for being tiny. The town that I'm from, which is in San Diego, we have the Palomar Airport. It's one tiny runway and a parking lot. There's nothing wrong with that. Who wrote this? Is Tracy from San Diego? 
Do I need to give her a list of all of our tiny airports? Tiny airports matter, okay? Also, I love, like, I don't know if this is low-key. I, I assume that this is inspired by Twilight. I hope that the fans aren't gonna be mad that I compared to Twilight this quickly, but having a girl from Phoenix warm sunny place go to forks this cold wet place and then having grace from san diego this warm sunny place going to alaska and she's like obsessed with the cold like this whole first chapter reminds me a lot of like when bella touches down in forks kind of thing so will they continue i will try not to point them out too much unless they're very obvious like this but i'm just excited for the vampires to show up here we go hi um, we've just met who I think could be a very important person in this series and she's describing him and I've only read the first part of the description so shall we shall we he has basically this guy shows up she's like waiting in a hallway somewhere this guy has skyscraper cheekbones which scares me full red lips a jaw so sharp it could cut stone smooth alabaster skin and his eyes a bottomless obsidian that see everything and show nothing surrounded by the longest most obscene lashes i've ever seen cool <laughs> i'm sorry i thought we were done she's trying to break away from his obsidian stare she's determined to avoid his eyes she looks anywhere but and I land instead on his long, lean body and then really wish I hadn't because the black jeans and t-shirt he's wearing only emphasize his flat stomach and hard, well-defined biceps. Not to mention the double wide shoulders that are absolutely responsible for blocking my view in the first place. Add in the thick, dark hair that's worn a little too long so that it falls forward into his face and skims low across his insane cheekbones and there's nothing to do but give in. Nothing to do but admit that, obnoxious smirk or not, this boy is sexy as hell. A little wicked, a lot wild, and all dangerous. <laughs> Hi there, so updates. I am only on page 47. These are, this is so quick to read because it's in this girl's point of view and as I have shown you a little bit, she speaks like a teenager basically and it's very easy to read through i get what the author like i i get that she's trying to make it seem like it's a teenager talking but i feel like a little bit more artistry could have been put into <laughs> the writing so anyway it's quick to read but she has been at this school so here's the premise okay i'm sorry basically grace's parents died in an accident together we assume and she, her only family is her uncle who lives in Alaska and he's the headmaster of this school, this like secret boarding school academy thing. So Grace goes up there to live with him and her cousin Macy. And she arrives and within, I kid you not, 30 minutes of being there, she is like being touched by so many, well not so many, but she's just like being physically touched by boys quickly um basically she has this weird tense conversation with who i assume is our edward he doesn't have a name yet but he's insanely hot that one they talked for 10 minutes and she was already like holding his face because he has a scar so she's already like cupping his cheek and he did something i forget what oh and he like backs her into a wall and is like up in her space tells her to get the hell out because something will eat her Okay. And then this like happy-go-lucky, I'm gonna say Jacob-esque character comes to help her bring her bags upstairs and literally like carries her upstairs, like grabs her by the waist and just carries her upstairs. And then she runs into this Edward guy again and he ignores her but brushes up against her in the hallway. And I'm just like, you've been here for no time and you're just, I would be so uncomfortable getting touched so much. You met my homegirl hey. Bella. Oh, you're your you're homegirl. Yeah. 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 My girl. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mess up the game, Mike. That's a thing that's going on. I'm only 7% of the way through this book. This book is 600 pages. Here we go. <laughs> I 
I shouldn't be laughing. How her parents died. Um, so she finally breaks down. Her cousin finally gives her a hug and she's able to cry. And her cousin's like, oh, I really wish that, you know, none of this ever happened. I wish I could fix everything. And so she's like, yeah, I wish that too. I wish the last words my parents and I spoke weren't hurled at each other in a fight that seems so stupid now. I wish that my dad hadn't lost control of the car two hours later and driven himself and my mother off a cliff, plunging hundreds of feet into the ocean. What? Okay, why is she uncomfortable with the loving hug from her cousin that she's known her whole life, but like didn't really say anything, didn't mention this when she was being touched by those two strange hot boys? <laughs> okay so it's very terrifying that she is getting attacked by these students she went down because she was having a minor panic attack she went for a walk in the castle at night because that's what cures it and she runs into some boys and they decide to drag her out into the snow so she's like fighting against them terrifying but with my thin california blood what what? I mean, come on. <laughs> what am I reading? What am I reading? <sighs> it's literally this scene. Oh my god. Good evening, everyone. I am here with a 25% update. So we haven't started classes yet. She's feeling sick, so she's taking the first day of school off. It's very clear that everybody in this school is some kind of mythical creature, but they're trying to like keep that hidden from her somehow. So every time her cousin is like, I would never be friends with Flint because Flint is so clearly a and then she like changes the subject. It's just very silly. Do they think they're gonna keep this from this girl? How long is she supposed to go to school? That's what I'm That's what I'm doing. It's getting a little late and Kurt has some work to do, so I might not be screaming as much, but I will keep you updated as I continue this read. And the library gods smiled upon me and I just got the second book in on hold, so. I only said it'd be better if we weren't friends, not that I didn't wanna be. What does that mean? It means if you were smart, you'd stay away from me. They've known each other for two days. <laughs> Hi fam, I just woke up. We gotta talk. I finished this at like one something maybe even two i had the time of my life reading this rundown of what happened because i think i left off at like 50 percent and boy howdy we have grace who comes to school immediately is met with this intoxicatingly sexy boy who is like get the fuck out of this school she also meets this handsome very perky friendly golden retriever-esque boy named flint horrible things just keep happening to her she climbs a tree in a snowball fight and the branch breaks luckily flint is there to like throw his body under her and somehow he's not hurt whatever a chandelier falls on her there's an earthquake and her arter like a window breaks and her artery is slashed and she almost bleeds to death and somehow either flint or jackson is there to save the day what turns out happens okay are you ready for this first mystery that was solved we knew this as the reader flint is a dragon jackson is a vampire and macy her cousin is a witch and actually grace's dad used to be a very powerful warlock so after learning that she like very quickly falls in love with jackson the smut scenes which in this book have gone as far as like these bizarre makeout sessions <laughs> they will be like 
making out for literally hours and then Jackson will pull back and be like wait 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 we gotta have a serious conversation I gotta focus Grace and then the serious conversation is like do you think I'm a monster and Grace is like no and then they just go back at it like that was a serious conversation <clears throat> so what ends up happening is there's this girl Leah who I knew from the get-go was weird as hell because she kept wanting to get Grace alone in her room to drink tea and I'm like no 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 there's tea outside there's a cafeteria why do we need to do mani petties that was her thing she was like I want to have a girls night I want to do mani petties and I want you to drink my special tea people are trying to kill you this weird girl who you found chanting in the library in this mysterious language wants to make you her special tea and Grace notices red flags by the way throughout the whole book she's like there was this horrible feeling in my gut that I shouldn't go into the library but I push through because you know what? That's who I am. And it's just like, Grace, maybe listen. Listen to that gut feeling. Anyway, so it turns out Leah is also a vampire. Leah dated Hudson. Hudson is Jackson's brother, older brother, who died mysteriously. And it turns out Hudson went crazy because Jackson's family, they are vampire royalty and Hudson was next in line for the throne turns out he's racist and he wants to like commit genocide so Jackson is like the only thing I could do was kill him to stop him because he has some kind of power where he can like persuade you to do anything Hudson so he was like abusing that power and so Jackson killed him Leah is distraught his parents are distraught everyone hates jackson for killing the golden boy who is literally like i would say not a good guy right so anyway jackson's very tortured by this but now he's like the crown prince of the vampires so that's cool anyway leah is trying to do some kind of ritual to raise hudson from the dead but she needs to kill jackson and grace so the whole time people who are trying to kill her yeah that was flint golden retriever boy and all the dragons because they were like we can't let hudson rise from the dead so instead of like just politely i don't know figuring it out figuring out another way they were like the only way to stop this from happening is to kill grace long story short doesn't happen they kill leah and then you think this is happily ever after like obviously they've got shit to sort out but like okay the the main problem is gone no because they're sitting in the cafeteria and who walks in hudson surprise bitch i bet you thought you'd seen the last of me with a sword he's about to stab jackson grace gets in the way and is stabbed end of scene now we're getting things from jackson's point of view and do you want to know what grace turned into after being stabbed this is the end of the book her final form in crave she is a gargoyle <laughs> when i read that that was like at this point it was like 2 a.m and i just lost my absolute shit i highlighted a lot of things oh my god they tell each other really bad knock knock jokes like throughout the book and when jackson starts to be nice to her she's still feeling very sick so he somehow gets her number and is texting her he's like how was the breakfast and she's like really good thank you i'm still really bored though oh my god there's nothing on netflix uh. and so he sends her a book from the library we have just been in this library where she tells us that there are tens of thousands of books that she wants to read incredible stuff what does he send her twilight <laughs> yes he sends her twilight to read and then he also uses the winky kiss emoji by the way spoiler leah's tea is like poison okay so they're having like their weird makeout session and all of a sudden jackson bites her and like takes too much blood and he realizes that he's going feral and he's like get out grace get out while you can and then leah stabs jackson oh yeah leah killed her parents so there's that. Flint also thinks that Jackson is part of this plan of Leah's. He thinks that Jackson was just like seducing Grace in order to help get Hudson back, which doesn't make any sense because Jackson killed Hudson, but whatever. So Flint is like hands around Grace's neck about to kill her. And he's like, look, 
I don't have time to fill you in on everything, and it wouldn't change anything if I could. I want to save you, Grace. I do. But we can't let Leah do this. It'll mean the end of the world. So, you gotta die. It's the only way we can stop this from happening. He reaches forward, wraps his hand around my neck, and then he starts to squeeze. <laughs> like, what? Like, she's trying to figure out why her? Like, why does she need to die in this ritual? Like, why can't... Leah just find any other human. So Grace is thinking in her head, what makes me so special? The fact that she thinks I'm Jackson's mate? Where did the word mate come from? Grace. And then Leah is like, I hope he's suffering and then he'll finally know just how excruciating it feels to lose a mate. So then Leah says it, thinks that Jackson and Grace are mated. And then she's like, you're wrong, Leah. I'm not Jackson's mate. I don't even know what that means. But I'm sure if that were a thing, Jackson would have told me. Okay, so now she's a gargoyle. So cool. Bye. It begins. <laughs> okay, so I was pausing to giggle at the fact that the whole first chapter is she clearly doesn't know that like anything has happened to her. Like she blacked out since she got stabbed and may or may not have turned into a gargoyle i'm questioning myself at this point but she's like walking around and everyone is looking at her like what the fuck she gets taken to her uncle and everyone's like oh my god grace is back grace is awake whatever so like it's funny that she woke up and just thought that like no time had passed whatever and she's just like trying to go to class but then as i paused i realized that this book the last book was 600 something pages this book is 737 pages long I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I mean, we already knew this, but it's so... A gargoyle, Grace. You're a gargoyle. <laughs> okay, so what happened is, it wasn't Hudson's sword that turned her into a gargoyle. She turned into a gargoyle before Hudson's sword hit her. So that's why she's still alive. No one knows why she turned into a gargoyle. And then she's been in like a coma essentially she's been made of stone for four months which none of which she recalls and Hudson disappeared afterwards so we don't know where Hudson is also Flint apologized for trying to kill her and I think they're on good terms <laughs> I very much appreciate when authors are like aware that they are writing insanity and I think Tracy's just having a great time and I I'm so happy for her. So hold on a second. I don't think we've actually talked about how old is Jackson because he like bought her an iPhone and he's like, you know, money isn't a big deal. I've lived a long time. How long, Jackson? Also, something happened and she like cannot be near Jackson like if he says I love you she feels sick and anxious and I can't tell like sometimes it's written in a way of like it makes me nervous because if anything ever happens to me again Jackson will be broken and it's very much like Edward New Moon except Grace is Edward in this case but then it also maybe could be like a curse that she can't be with her fated mate or like whatever the hell he is um Okay. It begins. Oh no. Okay, so the way that they talk about their powers is so funny. So Jackson is a vampire, right? He just is a vampire. Flint is a dragon, but the way that he talks about his dragon powers, he calls it like my dragon as if there's a dragon that lives inside of him. And I thought that was funny, but now Grace is doing the same thing and she keeps calling it my gargoyle. <laughs> and so I'm just picturing this little gargoyle man like living inside of her being like, hee hee hee, I hate Jackson. And like flaring up every time Jackson comes near. It's very funny. I'm continuing. Hello darkness, my old friend. <laughs> So Grace wakes up covered in blood and one of the werewolves got attacked and she thinks that she did it, but she has no memory. 
And Jackson is like, but what if the werewolf bit you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm making tea and it's boiling, but look! Inside you! Her, now she's got a gargoyle and a crazy racist vampire in her! Oh shit! <laughs> Little outfit change because I ran out to the market and I got more tangerines than I could ever eat. I'm so excited. But anyway, we have now moved to we've realized that Hudson is like possessing her and she also has a gargoyle in her or whatever. The only thing that they can think of doing is Jackson's gonna bring her to the blood letter. Who's the blood letter? She's not his real grandma, but like essentially a vampire grandma. She's like an ancient and she's apparently like bloodthirsty crazy, but she looks like a sweet little grandma and she collects Monet paintings and she lives in an ice cave in Alaska. Um, and so now we're meeting her. And also like, it's just confirmed that like they are mates and like they haven't talked about it with each other, but they're just throwing that word around. Everybody knows. I'm still not sure how old Jackson is. I'm stressed. I've got heartburn from how many tangerines I've eaten as well, so. Hudson is awake and talking and he has a British accent, which makes me think Jackson does as well. And I don't know how that makes me feel. <laughs> yeah, so a casual reminder, guys. She may have, like, technically been at the school for five months, but she was in a coma for four months. She has known Jackson, this guy that she is, like, mated with, gonna live with for the rest of her life kind of thing, would die for, already has died for, became a fucking gargoyle for. She's known him less than two weeks. Okay, confirmed. Jackson does not have a British accent. Only the villains do. <laughs> okay, okay, we're getting closer. He might be centuries old, but only 18 in human years. What? does that mean? Yeah, read the next sentence. Yeah, we're all thinking that, Grace. We're all thinking that. <laughs> no context. <laughs> so the gang is all back together because in order to exorcise Hudson from Grace and turn him human, they need to get five magical objects. And so everybody has to work as a team. So we've got Flint, we've got Macy, everybody's on board. They have to kill an unkillable beast, which we're getting to, but we've just found out that Grace can receive other people's power and use it. So Macy gave her a little bit of firepower and she could like light candles and shit. Hudson helped her. It's very obvious that we don't know the full story. I think what's gonna happen is that Hudson was like kind of a good guy, not racist, hopefully. I think Jackson misunderstood and killed him and that's gonna be a whirlwind. There's also weird sexual tension between Grace and Hudson now, which is just not something I wanted to deal with. Jackson is becoming like weird and possessive. Is he having a Tamlin moment? No, right? Right? All I know is that Hudson's definitely gonna die. He's definitely gonna sacrifice himself. He's not gonna come back to life. He's dead. Like, he's just got that feeling of a dead character, you know? Um, I continue. Oh, but now he's disappeared. He helped her understand her power and helped her light those candles. And then there was like a weird moment and then he disappeared. So... Oh, and there's also some kind of tournament that they can enter. And if they win it, they become like royalty or some weird shit. I don't even know. I don't know. But. Wait. They might have had more moments. Like, so he basically 
because he's in her head, he can like snap his fingers and make music play like when you get a song stuck in her, your head. Anyway, so he starts playing music and he's like, why don't you dance with me? They end up dancing and- Why oh, you have so much music. What are you listening to? She's like, how did you know that was my favorite song? He's like, you don't remember anything about our time together. So when she became a gargoyle and she was like in a coma, just like missing for four months, she was with him and she doesn't remember anything of that time. So she's technically like known Hudson longer than she's known Jackson, which is weird. And he's being all weird about it. She's like, wait, we hung out. You remember our time together? And he's like, never mind. I don't know what I was thinking. Never mind. Mm. Why am I? Why am I into this? This is so stupid. And I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself fully reading this book. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This statement comes after staring at her ass. <laughs> Hi, so our girl has learned through Hudson, who, after playing Flo Rida while they were doing laundry, um, taught her how to use her magic. And so now she can turn into a gargoyle, but like before she makes the full shift into just being a statue, she can stop and then she's just herself, but she has horns and wings. And so now she can learn to fly. <sighs> so Jackson is getting really annoyed that she keeps talking to Hudson and like he can't see him or hear him. So he's like throwing a hissy fit and it's getting ugly. Oh, just kidding. Two seconds later, he is completely understanding. So... The mate thing is back on, everybody. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Something definitely went down in those four months. And I can't wait to find out. I knew it. I knew it. Then who is his mate? <gasps> in case you're still confused about what happened in Crave, this is what went down. <laughs> Our dragon golden retriever, Flint, just came out to Grace and he keeps talking about like, yeah, you know, I've been just like in love with the same emotionally unavailable guy for forever, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Grace is talking shit like, oh yeah, he doesn't deserve you, like blah, blah, blah. And then she realizes it was Jackson. Flint loved Jackson. It was truly like a Team Edward and Jacob situation. But now Jackson has uh, obviously been taken. So, oh my God. So a lot has happened. I have been flying through this book because it's mildly unreadable. They're going on these quests to like get certain magical items, as I mentioned. And it's just boring as hell, to be honest. Um, so I'm skimming a lot but I'm completely understanding the plot it's one of those books where you don't actually have to read it so anyway they get the dragon bone they play their little tournament game and they win a prize which is a bloodstone which is another magical item that they need so they're doing great in terms of that however grace is the first gargoyle in like a thousand years so she's very special jackson and hudson's parents are there to like award the winners of the tournament or whatever and they're like up to something they always are they're evil remember so just they've got like something weird going on with grace like they maybe want to kill her. I don't know. Grace did really well in the tournament and they were like, didn't she do great? That's a, like, she did amazing. But we also saw how she almost got injured during the game. And like, we can't have that happening. She's so precious. Our gargoyle, our first gargoyle in a thousand years. So the only way that we can keep her safe is we're taking her out of school and we're bringing her to London to live in the vampire court with us. And both Hudson and Jackson are like, oh no. And I guess because like they're the vampire king and queen and they like are on the circle, which is the ruling party, but they have like the most power in it. 
no one can veto their idea so i think we're going to london now okay so in order to not be taken to the vampire court she's like wait a second wait a second every mythical creature needs to be on the in the circle by law so i'm like there are gargoyles now and i'm the only gargoyle so i deserve a seat at the table but in order to get on the circle you need to do this trial but the only way that you can survive the trial is if you are a mated pair and so her and jackson are gonna fight to be on the circle representing gargoyles everywhere <laughs> the nice cute wolf was just killed by the unkillable beast xavier that's sad but then turns out the unkillable beast is actually just like a nice little giant gargoyle and he was just trying he doesn't like wolves so that's why he killed the werewolf and he was trying to protect macy the witch someone locked him up and they set him free and they just have to ask for the thing that they need and he gave it to them <laughs> No one had to die. No one had to die. <gasps> okay, so I, I didn't mention this because this book is so goddamn long that I need to edit. And basically, Jackson, when he first found out that he was mated with Grace, he was very scared because he had like caused an earthquake and almost killed her because the glass cut her remember this so he was like i just don't want to be mated to her this seems dangerous like i'm for her sake i love her so much i'll break the mating bond and like she'll never know blah 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 so anyway he gets a spell to break the mating bond and then he's like i can't do it i love her too much and he throws out the spell however cole the alpha wolf who's a piece of shit he found it in the trash can and so he just like reads the spell out and breaks the mating bond both of them are like convulsing on the ground screaming and the mating bond is broken oh my god yes, I can. Doubt, leave. I'm with this plan. Pull me, grab me, grab the <laughs> i'm sorry but 700 pages later and this is still so funny that she's a gargoyle. <sighs> this fucking book. This fucking book. Oh. <laughs> they break the mating bond, but Grace decides to still do the trial even without Jackson because Hudson is like, you can do it, girl. And she does it and she wins. But it's because she... Hudson like gave her some of his power so Cyrus the vampire king is like you won but you cheated and there's no cheating allowed and he bites her and like the vampire bite that kills not the like seductive vampire bite that Jackson does <sighs> and so she's dying Hudson grabs her and is like I've got an idea buries her alive everyone is like what the fuck hudson jackson is not enjoying this buries her alive we cut to hudson's point of view and she somehow somehow like the burying her alive bit like saves her from the vampire bite and she arises from the dead I'll just read you the last bit. This is Hudson's point of view, trying to be calm. Grace has just crawled out of the hole that he dug for her. And he watches Jackson as he wraps his arms around her and presses her body to his. And I begin to see red, even before he leans down to kiss her and every ounce of chill and emotional self-preservation I have goes out the fucking window. My hands curl into fists, my fangs explode in my mouth. Though there were a million other ways I was hoping to break my newfound knowledge to grace, the words come out before I can even think about stopping them. Jackson, if you wouldn't mind, take your fucking hands off my mate. God damn it. I knew it. I hate this year it's like the thing is this is like low-key like i said unreadable like it's not it's 
so long for no reason. It's so difficult to read, but the the storyline is so funny that like I'm re I'm just skimming huge swaths of it just to understand this ridiculous plot and I'm enjoying it but it's also just like tedious to read. I feel tired now um but I'm gonna read the next one obviously for you. For you. You. I'm gonna read it. I'm trying to remain calm. I got the first two books from the library, placed them on hold. They came in quite quickly. The other two books on hold, I have too many holds. Um, so I have to be very strategic about how many books I place on hold. So I only placed a hold for book three and book four. And the wait time is many, many weeks. So I decided for the greater good, I would go purchase the rest of the series. Tell me why. <laughs> Tell me why the series isn't finished. Oh my god, I'm literally, I feel tears. The sixth and final book is coming out May 2023. What is this? November, December, January, February, March, April, May. I was kidding in the beginning when I was like, I should have checked that it was finished. I could have sworn that it was finished. I'm speechless. Am I gonna read until five? Yeah, because I just fucking bought them. But the series isn't gonna end until May, 2023. I thought I was gonna wash my hands of this fucking series, leave it in 2022 as like a fond memory. Okay, I'm gonna go have a little mental breakdown and I'll see you tomorrow when I start reading Covet. Bye. No, 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 no. Tell me why this book is 872 pages long. Tracy! It's a new day. We're starting Covet. We have skipped, we fast forwarded three weeks, about four weeks actually. We have buried Xavier, who's very sad. Macy is very torn up because she had a mega crush on him right before he died. Hudson and Jackson are apparently being real mopey. We don't know how exactly what Grace knows about the whole mate situation, but Jackson and Hudson are there because, oh, how convenient. Hudson actually, before Jackson killed him, Hudson didn't technically have enough credits to graduate. So he's gonna stay at the school to take more classes so that he can graduate. Huh. So mating bonds have never, ever, 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 ever been broken, but somehow Cole, shithead alpha wolf, is able to read a little spell off a piece of paper and br- What? Okay, confirmation. Jackson is 200 years old and he wants to break up with Grace because it's just too painful, even though Grace still loves Jackson and only wants friendship with Hudson. And Grace is like, we could break the bond again. And he's like, no, I wouldn't wish that on my brother, even though I already tried to kill him. Mm. So anyway, yeah, he's 200 years old. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So turns out like you can kind of see the mating bond. So when Hudson was like in Grace's head, he saw the mating bond and he was like, I've been researching it and there was like something weird about it. Like it was two colors versus like now their mating bond is like sparkly and stuff. And Grace is thinking back and she's wondering like, what if Leah did that? What if Leah somehow cast, you know, it doesn't make any sense that they were able to break the bond so easily so maybe the bond was broken like already no it was fake <gasps> the blood letter made jackson and grace's bond i knew it <sighs> okay big update time so turns out the blood letter manufactured Jackson and Grace's bond because before Grace was born, a bunch of witches came to her asking her like, what do we do? There haven't been gargoyles in a thousand years. And gargoyles are like the peacekeepers of the realm. So like everything is falling to shit, including what's everything that's been going on in the human world because there aren't any gargoyles around to fix it. 
Um, so the witches were very concerned and some of the witches included Grace's father and then her non-witch mother, but the blood letter could feel that Grace's mother was pregnant and she was like, ooh, that baby, that baby's special. She was like, I have a feeling that this baby's gonna be really important, um, so I'm gonna help you out, but in return, I want this baby to be mated with Jackson. Okay. And Grace is like, oh, I was special because I'm a gargoyle. And the blood letter says, no, because of who you really are. We don't get an explanation of what she really is, but she's like more than a gargoyle. I do not want this to turn into some kind of messiah complex. I will not have it. If this takes a religious turn, I'm outie. Got too much religious based trauma in my life. And then Hudson has been like frozen. He was annoying the blood letter, so she like froze him. So he like gets unfrozen and he's like, well, I still want you to break the mating bond. Blah, 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 blah. And she's like, I can't do that. But if you find this crown that has been missing for a thousand years, that gives the wearer infinite power, then you can break it. Who would know where the crown is? The unkillable beast, who is a gargoyle, as we've talked about. Turns out he needs to be brought back into his human form. He's just been in his gargoyle form for thousands of years. He is chained up and in the last book they tried to unchain him and they couldn't. So now they need to find the blacksmith in order to unchain the killable beast, turn him human, find the crown, break the mating bond. I think that's our task for this 872 page book. Bye. Hudson made her a grilled cheese. This is so random, but I don't know why I love this when like a teacher yells at students and there's like one student who's always in trouble, but like wasn't involved in this one at all, but, he, but still gets called in because the teacher's like, I'm sure you did fucking something. So just what do these, what do they mean? Tracy, not a Lewis Capaldi cameo. Oh. <laughs> It seems like Cyrus, aka Daddy Vampire King, is coercing the new, like the freshmen and the sophomore vampires and wolves to act evil. Like they're all attacking each other randomly. Like even like baby vampires are attacking older vampires, like the juniors and the senior vampires, but nothing good is coming. Also, oh, once they graduate, Cyrus has like a warrant out for Hudson's arrest and it's like a prison that nobody ever gets out of alive and they torture you and stuff. So cool. They're going to look for the crown in order to hopefully overthrow Cyrus so that he doesn't have to go to torture prison. Okay, <laughs> that's my update. Okay, kids, here's the explanation <clears throat> of why the Jackson storyline will come to an end. He doesn't quite get a villain arc, but um, he was just what they needed at the time, you know? Hmm. The blacksmith is in the prison that no one gets out of and everyone is tortured to insanity there. So they're fucked. I'm sorry, I keep changing my hair. Um, so Flint invited everybody to go to the dragon court for some kind of festival and also to like soft launch his new boyfriend, the vampire Luca, onto the fam. His mom just arrested Hudson. Also, I'm just now realizing, did Jackson like never apologized for like misunderstanding Hudson? Like Hudson was trying to stop his dad from committing genocide, but like, Jackson thought that he was the one who was like pro-genocide and so he killed Hudson. I don't know if they ever had a conversation in which Jackson maybe said sorry because I feel like an apology is necessary. Like even if Hudson came back to life, maybe? Oh my gosh, our gargoyle queen just like did a whole diplomatic meeting and got Hudson set free. So now I guess the dragons are gonna help the gang of high school students 
take down racist vampire daddy. I'm exhausted, guys. <sighs> oh my god. Now, not only do we need to find the blacksmith, but now we need to find the crone because she's the witch that built the prison and they're gonna send Hudson to prison anyway so that he can find the blacksmith and we need... <laughs> So they're going to a party at the dragon house and at the end of the party everybody gets a gift and she, Grace gets like apples or Google stock and now she's a millionaire. Okay. I make money like so this is why this book is so fucking long. Why is this stuff in here? Hudson said L-O-V-E and Grace is freaking the fuck out. Oh on a damn minute so jackson's been acting like more annoying than usual a little bit emotionless you know and he basically went to london he's been like liaisoning with the vampire court so but when he was in london he went to a healer to see what was wrong and apparently his soul is broken so when she immediately made it to hudson her soul was fine but he's alone, and so now the pieces of his soul are dying. What? Bye. What? There's nothing you can do, Grace, except wait for my soul to die completely. <laughs> Quick update, because Jackson's soul is breaking and he's gonna die, they are going to use the crown to break the mating bond between Hudson and Grace. I don't know how, and like remate with Jack. So anyway, basically now Grace is like, even though they had their like sexy time in New York at the dragon party, which was 200 pages of nonsense, did not need to be there. They've like had their intimate time and now Grace is like, no more. I don't, like, we're gonna break up eventually because we need to save Jackson. And, like, Hudson loves his little brother, so, like, he's down. Ugh, I don't know. Anyway, they just graduated. Now Hudson is getting arrested, as we expected, being taken to the evil prison. And Grace decides to go with him because if you're mated, you can, like, decide to go to prison with your mate, whatever. So they're both going to prison. This prison tricks you into not wanting to get out, but they found the witch, and the witch is, like drink my weird suicide tea and you'll die long enough that the curse like lifts from you and then you can find a way out so they're not really gonna die but they're just gonna kind of die and apparently cyrus is the one that killed vampire daddy is the one that killed all the gargoyles in the first place he kind of lost his powers he's like acting strong but really he's just very scared that people are gonna realize he doesn't have powers and he wants to find the crown so that he can have powers again. I can't believe there are still 300 pages left to this book. This book is too goddamn long. I'm getting angry, actually. They have been in this prison for like 250 pages. Nothing has happened. There's no, nothing has, nothing has happened. But Hudson is being forced to live in these nightmares where he kills Grace like over and over and over again to like repent for his sins. Grace finds a way to like break him out of that. It's just so stupid. Like literally nothing is happening. I'm, I'm skimming so fast because the plot is stagnant it's so boring i'm tired i'm a little cranky but i'm actually like angry does she have an editor who allowed her to write so much that just does not need to be there i'm just upset that she wasted so much of her time writing all of this i know that i'm sounding really harsh but like i have never read a book in which like it's not even funny there's i feel zero emotions when I'm reading this, it's not even like she's pausing the plot to make it like smutty or pausing the plot to make it heartwarming or we like randomly fall in love with a new character. None of the new characters are good. I can't believe 
She's wasting our time like this. Is she getting paid by the word? Oh my God. So they finally found the blacksmith. I'm just so bored. How much more, how much more can I take, honestly? It's like she hates me. It's like she wrote this book thinking, how can I piss Carrie off? She just almost killed Flint. Flint is probably gonna die. Also just killed Flint's cute, vampire boyfriend and I just don't know what's happening <laughs> what the fuck is happening now Jackson got bitten by his dad and is dying so he's like use the rest of the powers in my body to help heal Flint and is that the end oh it's not oh my fucking god so Flint wakes up because he's been healed and he sees his dead vampire boyfriend laying next to him and then he sees the other vampire boy that he was in love with aka jackson also dead next to him i am weak i feel like i have been in this battle nuri flint's mom who like is a piece of shit i can't even go into it she like was like, we're gonna take Cyrus down. We're on your side, Grace. She's queen of the dragons. And then she randomly decided to be on Cyrus's side. I don't even, I can't even explain, guys. At the end of the battle, she sees how broken Flint is and she's like, oh my God, this is all my fault. Both of her son's vampire boyfriends died at the same time. And so, <laughs> so she takes out her dragon heart so she becomes human and puts it in jackson jackson gasps his body arches off the ground he jackknives into a sitting position Jesus jackson blinks up at his brother my soul i can feel my soul again fuck this book so now is flint dragon king why didn't she save luca like everyone was just kind of like fuck luca let's go get this crown and shove it up cyrus's ass i can't believe this book isn't over what the fuck <sighs> we made it guys all right so they come back from the battle and the academy has is like burning and apparently daddy vampire kidnapped all of the students and the teachers it's an act of war so all of the like friend group there's 11 of them are going to have to find a way to get the students back i think i was too excited that the book was over that i forgot to mention that they did actually manage to free the unkillable beast and he keeps saying i need to give the crown to her protect her he put he gives her the crown but like the crown is like a tattoo on her hand and that's where we left off i need rest and we know that grace is something other than gargoyle right and this is hudson's point of view and Hudson's like, I think it's time to tell her about her emerald green string. Because you can, like, look into people's power and, like, every power is a thread of string. So kind of like the mating bond. And so she has a green string. What could it be? Why hasn't Hudson spilt the tea yet? Stop hiding shit from people. Just talk, guys. I'm so sick of it. This series should have only been three books long. Why are there six? I want to die. I'm going to murder someone. I just checked, I just opened the next book, just to see, just to see. <gasps> That's 939 pages long. How, how, book number five, the fifth book is back. We're back in the 700 page range. 939 pages. Guys, am I gonna am I gonna live through this series? My head, I, my head hurts. I need to go drink water. I need to go like walk around and get my blood pumping because. <sighs> See you tomorrow. Good morning, my friends. It's a new day, and I took a break from reading to nurse my husband. He had a cold, and while I did that, I happened to catch 
said cold. So I'm struggling a little bit right now. But yeah, I'm just going to continue to eat a lot of tangerines and I'm gonna read Court, the nine million page book, ouch, which starts off with, we are totally fucked. <laughs> Here we go. Starting off strong, starting off strong. So we're in Hudson's point of view and Grace is sitting on the floor, her hair wet from her shower, her curls glistening in the flickering light. She's wearing one of my t-shirts and a pair of my sweatpants. She's never looked more beautiful whatever okay she's a little distracted they're all scared right because they're about to go to war with like the vampires whatever she is staring at her phone because the specialist is looking at flint to see if he'll be able to keep his legs <sighs> also in the previous book hudson bought her a promise ring you like magically put a promise in there and like you can't break it unless you die or someone or the person takes it off I don't know but he never told her what the promise was so she keeps guessing but like it's gonna be something to do with him dying I'm sure he still feels like a dead character to me okay another thing that I forgot to mention is so the prologue to this book ends with Hudson saying like I should tell her that it's all my fault like because he has some like destiny that he need whatever like for some reason Hudson believes that he's the cause of all of this but what I didn't mention is that so Leah in the first book go way back way back right creepy girl who wants to do Manny petties she believed that Hudson was her mate right she mentioned that but she wasn't why did she think that because Hudson, remember, he has um, a persuasive power. And so just like as a joke, because he was legitimately dating Leah, as a joke, he said something like, you're gonna love me forever. He like used his power and she then became obsessed with him. So her killing Grace's parents, killing, trying to kill Grace, stabbing Jackson, bringing Hudson back from the dead, Everything she did was because Hudson used his power on her. And he like mentioned this to Grace, like, oh yeah, Leah was in love with me because of this. And like, it wasn't made into a big deal. But like, I feel like that is a big deal. Leah is kind of this villainous character. She keeps calling her like your insane bitch ex-girlfriend who tried to kill me. But like, she tried to kill you because she was you know mm? Mm? okay just wanted to put that out there so yeah i do agree all of this is hudson's fault even if i only know the tip of the iceberg let's find out why hudson is shit it's gone the leg is gone boyfriend leg poor flint man and everyone's pissed at hudson because first of all Luca died and apparently vampires need to be buried within 24 hours of their death or else they'll disintegrate. So they need to call his parents to be like, hey, come pick up your kid's body and bury it. And Hudson is like, no, they're from the vampire court. I don't think we should invite them here. Like he's basically saying his parents can't come pick up their dead son's body. But the real issue is Hudson has this like bottomless well of power. He is so fucking powerful and he has talked about how he has like locked away a bunch of his power, blah, blah, blah. And Flint is like, if Grace had been the one almost dying, like we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Like Hudson would have used 100% of his power, right? Hudson's trying to be like, well, I was fighting the same as you guys, but they're, but everybody's kind of like, but that's not the same. Like you weren't using, we were giving 100%, you were not. And so now everybody's divided. It's like Grace and Hudson versus everybody else in the group. So I am gonna lose my mind. So they freed the unkillable beast, right? And then he just like ran off. So he gave her the crown, ran off. Okay, so then she is trying to sleep Grace is trying to sleep. She hears the voices in her head again, the gargoyle. And so she just like starts walking around the castle and finds him in his human form. He's hovering over a chessboard. He's got in, in like this world, chess is like dragons versus vampires. And so he's holding the vampire queen piece and he's like not making any sense. And so she like touches him and they get zapped into 
the gargoyle court. Turns out he is the gargoyle king. He is also her great 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 grandfather. Her grandmother is something other than gargoyle. What if, okay, twisted ass story. It could go there. What if her great 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 grandmother is the vampire queen? Is she gonna pull a Cassie Clare like maybe my mate is also my cousin thing because that would be like <laughs> beyond what I can handle. But I think like why else would he keep referencing the vampire queen? And he like, apparently all the gargoyles are still alive. We She hasn't like asked that question. She was much more interested in, you're my grandfather. So she hasn't asked, but apparently all the gargoyles are like still alive and need to be rescued. So we have to rescue all of the kids from school who apparently Cyrus is using to like use their young magic. So he's draining them and all the students are gonna die. And we also have to find out where the gargoyles are. right her grandma would bite her she is 100 percent, 100 percent a vampire fuck you the gargoyles are irish <laughs> oh and also she's the vampire queen and all the gargoyles are at court there's a gargoyle army mm -hmm. and she can wake them up and control them and cool also why can't he just say his wife's name he keeps saying your grandmother or my mate say a name alistair say a name oh my god so they called luca's parents and they did a really pretty job of like making his funeral really beautiful and so M maurice who is the school nurse who has been taking care of them and is the only person who had survived the abduction of the teachers and the students she apparently works with cyrus but vivian and miles luca's parents decided to protect the kids because they did such a good job with their son's funeral. So they gotta run, they gotta bounce. We got some Korean witches up in here. This has been mentioned once or twice, but Macy's mom just like up and deserted her and Finn, um, I think when she was like eight or something like that, but apparently she's working for Daddy Vamp. Mm -mm. Hudson has such a way with words. Wait, wait. So, um, vampires can be out in the sun if they if they drink animal blood, but if they drink human blood, they have to stay out of the sun. And so Hudson has to has to leave because the sun is rising, and he like does the sexy drinking from Grace, as we know. But Jackson also has to leave. And we're like, why? What did he drink from? And it seems like Flint is not making eye contact with anyone. So is this a thing now? Is this a thing? I just love that this was so obviously written by a millennial or like whatever the hell my generation is because she's referencing songs that are all like part of my middle school experience and i just think it's so funny that they're these are written in like 2020 and they're meant to be like present day high school students <laughs> but they're all listening to like what is going on all righty so the blood letter yes is her grandmother and mated to the gargoyle king. Grace's mom was a gargoyle, but she didn't know. And the blood letter is also the god of chaos. So she's like super duper immortal. So that makes Grace a demigod. And Jackson just sent the rest of his order, his other vampire people, to the vampire court to be spies there. That's it. We're trying to figure out how to wake up the gargoyle army again. We're on page 229. <laughs> so so this like the god of time or something shows up i don't know this is this book is an absolute shit storm he's just he's just so sassy <laughs> okay now <clears throat> we spent literally like 30 pages with 
Grace learning how to use her power, but she doesn't even learn how to use her power. She just accidentally rips a little hole in time. So then we get to meet the God of Time, who is annoying as hell, really likes Niall Horan, fixes whatever Grace broke. And then he's like, by the way, if you want to help your gargoyle army because they're poisoned, you have to go to Florida and find the Fountain of Youth and you can soak your little gargoyle magic string in there and then you can wake them up. And they went to Florida and they found where the Fountain of Youth is. It's in a saltwater taffy shop and they have to like play a game to enter the fountain. So we have to play the game to get to the Fountain of Youth, drink from the Fountain of Youth, free the gargoyle army, use the army to overthrow Cyrus, save all the kids. But also Cyrus knows that Grace is a god, demigod, and wants to kill her. So yeah, I understand life is complicated, but this plot does not need to be this complicated. And once again, the new characters that are introduced are not good and not enough to like waste so much of our goddamn time having to read about this. So I'm once again angry and I'm only on page 300 and I'm sick. And so I have a headache and I'm congested and it's just making me so... Ooh, I can't wait to finish this. One and two thirds more book to go. <sighs> and surprise, no one has ever succeeded in this game to get to the Fountain of Youth. So also question, Jackson was given the dragon heart. Why is he still like 100% vamp? Like why did he get all of his powers back? Shouldn't he have dragon abilities? I want to know more. This is just too much to explain, but basically they, half of the group goes to the vampire court because they want to free Macy's mom. And so the rest of the group goes after them because they don't have enough people to play the game to get the Fountain of Youth, right? So then we learn about a little vampire lore and basically when vampire babies are born, they get like put in these dungeons and given this sleeping potion to put them to sleep while their powers wake up. And normally they're supposed to only wake you up once a year to like check your powers, but their parents wanted to experiment on Hudson. So they woke him up every month. And so the sleeping potion, like he became immune to it. So he like spent a hundred years in solitary confinement and he was like awake and <laughs> What? Big updates. Okay, so they make it to the vampire court. They are immediately caught and thrown in the dungeon. Uncle Finn is there. Macy, everybody who went before them to the vampire court is caught. Turns out Macy's mom is at the vampire court serving some kind of life sentence because she had promised the crone a favor and she failed to succeed in whatever that favor was. And so her punishment is to be at the vampire court for an eternity. Issue is in the previous book, the crone, remember, is the one who gave them the flowers to help them get out of the jail, right? So the crone is actually the blood letter's sister, the other god, and her like, immortal life goal is to take over the world and have like the paranormals rule the humans and so she tries constantly is trying to kill the blood letter and remember in order to get the flowers grace promised the crone that she would owe her a favor so grace is fucked so we have that to worry about but now daddy vamp cyrus has come in to have a chat with everybody and also we may or may not have met a new sister. Jackson and Hudson did not know that they had a sister, but now I think they do. Like we literally just spent four pages of Macy coming in and using her magic to replace the chamber pots with toilets and modern plumbing. This book is obscenely long. Checking in, incredibly bored. Where did I even leave you off? So Cyrus wants them to get the God Stone, which is in the gargoyle court, which will maybe turn him into a God. 
And if they don't do it in an allotted amount of time, he will just one by one kill everybody that Grace loves. So they go to the gargoyle court. They're training with the gargoyle army. Suddenly night falls and they're being attacked by an army of skeletons. Why? Because they're, the gargoyle court is frozen in time. And so no one can die technically. So even if you do die, you're like, not dead. So all of those skeletons that come and attack are like gargoyles that have died. So there's like thousands of skeletons that come and attack them every single night for thousands of years. And so we have to deal with that. Grace didn't know this. So Grace tells Hudson to disintegrate them, which Hudson does and he has a mental breakdown why because every time that he disintegrates something he basically like takes people apart molecule by molecule and in order to do that he has to like get in their heads and feel what they're feeling so he like knew that they were gargoyle i don't know he just had a mental breakdown and anyway that's what we're doing and i'm just i'm 50 percent of the way through we just keep getting tasks like every time we get close to doing x they give us Y and Z and we have to just start all over again. And then there's just so, so much. It's like not even funny anymore. Like sometimes I, it, like in the first three books, I would say there was just a certain amount of ridiculousness that was like made it kind of like a bad TV show. You were able to stomach the boring bits because you were just like, what's gonna happen? But now it's like not even funny. There's no entertainment value and there's no like, emotional i don't know i'm getting nothing i'm getting nothing from this book it just gets weirder and weirder so now we learn that his sister who is named izzy or isadora was put in the crypt for thousands of years so she's crazier than hudson also hudson was so sick of being tortured valid that he basically attempted to not kill himself but like end himself he like disintegrated himself and it was very peaceful and so then it all clicks when jackson tried to kill hudson hudson didn't really die he like faked his death he disintegrated himself again just to like make hudson stop trying to kill him i don't know so then why did leah <sighs> and when they were in like the frozen time it felt like four months to the outside world but what if it felt five times longer for hudson and grace but grace doesn't remember <gasps> jesus christ again with the broken souls so every time that hudson disintegrates someone they take a piece of his soul and he's been disintegrating like five thousand skeletons every night for the past like four nights along with like all the other people he's disintegrated so uh <laughs> So when he gets angry, his alleged British accent grows. And so in order to demonstrate that, she writes, fucking, you fucking think I want to feel this? Where is he from? He's supposed to have like a really posh accent, but he's fucking up. He's fucking slipping. Hi there. I took my sick body out for a walk because I just couldn't sit on that couch for another minute reading that book and then it started to pour so if my cold gets worse because of that book I'm gonna be so mad in all honesty walking in the fresh air especially cold air when you have a cold makes me feel a lot better so I'm I'm in good spirits this is our little intermission but thoughts and prayers are accepted and encouraged at this time Bye. Someone please make it stop. Please. <laughs> Everything you say to me. Oh, so they got the god stone, brought it back to Cyrus. Of course, he doesn't hold his end of the deal, which was to set the kids free. And then in like a panicked move, Grace decides to freeze him, but she accidentally freezes both of them. Somehow that means that she goes into his subconscious and his memories and he just talks some really nasty shit about his wife and he's like a really horrible guy. So then they flash back to the present, they unfreeze themselves. Jackson and Hudson might be drained of their power. Everyone's like dying, it's chaos. We don't know what happened in the 30 minutes since they like froze. She sees the vampire queen and she's like, aren't you sick of your husband bossing you around? Cause you're certainly acting like a doormat. Now she's very angry. All right, 
queen power, I guess. <sighs> All right, vampire mom lets everybody out, but Macy's mom can't leave. Grace's aunt can't leave because she still hasn't fulfilled the favor. So they're like, what was the favor? The favor was to bring the crone's daughter to her. And the daughter is Izzy, Isadora. So vampire daddy cheated on vampire queen with the crone, AKA the blood letters sister. Right, are we following? Barely, it's okay. We also find out that why did the aunt make that deal in the first place? What did she get out of it? She was getting tea from the crone to give to Grace's parents to help hide Grace's powers because they were very scared. They knew that once she came into her powers, everybody would want to kill her, AKA Cyrus. So, yeah, that happened. And then they kidnap Isadora, bring her to the crone. The crone thought that the blood letter, her sister, kidnapped and killed her daughter. But in reality, it was Cyrus the whole time who kidnapped her and tortured her. So the whole like sister, the blood letter, and the crone's rivalry is over a lie. It's over, it's something that Cyrus caused. So there's that. Now they're gonna go back to Florida and they're gonna try and do that impossible trial again to hopefully get to that damn fountain of youth and free all the gargoyles and take down the vampires. How are there still two books and 300 pages left in this series? My god. Okay, just to further demonstrate how long this book is, from page 641 to page 767 is one battle scene where they're like in the trials trying to get to the fountain of youth over a hundred pages of just like fighting shit two people die but they're the characters that we like never hear from really they get the fountain of youth things why is she doing this to us like again there's no entertainment value whatsoever i felt no emotion reading it even the scene where the people died. There's nothing, there's nothing in this book. Jackson is not only a vampire, but now he can turn into a dragon. So they're gonna fight the vampire army now. Hopefully the last battle of this book and then 700 more pages for book five. Oh my God, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> this might be incredible news. Um, first things first is that, where did I even leave you off? Oh, oh no. So they have the war thing. They're most definitely losing. Cyrus ties everybody to this machine that sucks out all of their power. But then Grace is like, no. And she pulls on all of her God power and she like becomes mother nature, gives all of her, all the powers back to her friends. Cyrus becomes a God, but she's like, you're a false God. And me and Izzy, we are demigods. And so together we're going to take you down. And they just like win the battle. The gargoyles come and they win whatever. So they like basically tie everything up in a nice little bow. Our epilogue is that now they're going to college and she's working on moving the gargoyle court to San Diego because it's the best city in the world. <laughs> okay. And now she suddenly is like, <gasps> Hudson, I remember everything that happened in those four months we were together. So I think the fifth book is just their memories. Do I have to read it? I, like I'm gonna read it because I bought it because I'm stupid, but what could the what could the sixth book be what could the fifth book be so we're gonna read that i'm gonna take a break but like i think we finished the book she like took away all of cyrus's powers so he's human but she left his immortality so she locked him and the vampire mom up together because like she needs to atone for her crimes as well but she gets to torture him, vampire daddy for a thousand years. So she's imprisoned and punished, but she also gets a reward. The end? <laughs> Holy shit, it is. It is. Oh my God. So it's almost like a second. What the fuck? I'm actually so happy that this stupid series is kind of over. I'm going to talk a little bit more tomorrow. I'm signing off now before I lose my mind. I love you all so much. Goodbye. Hello, it's a new day. I'm a wreck. <clears throat> um, 
So I told you that I caught a cold yesterday and after I finished, what was it, court, um, I just like descended into a really horrible fever um, and I am recovering. I, I feel human again, but I'm like not fully there. So um, I'm in this video. I've decided not to vlog my experience of reading Charmed, I think is the next one. Um, I'm going to stick to, since it seems like the four books were really like the beginning and the end of a story, um, I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. What's weird though is that the fifth one is a flashback to those four months that like we missed, right? The sixth one, which is like I said, coming out in May or June, that one is like a continuation. Like now they've all graduated. They're allegedly all living in San Diego, whatever the hell. If there's noise in the background, we just got lunch delivered. So ignore. <laughs> so anyway, they're like, it seems like a continuation and there's something to do with the shadow realm. I don't know, but it seems like it's going to be like another new adventure another new crisis that they need to solve i genuinely don't know if i can continue because i just don't i i felt like in the first couple of books like especially one and two um the characters were new the characters were fun understanding their relationships their humor everything like that was like quite a good time but by the time it was like halfway through the third book and then definitely in the fourth book it just felt like she the author was writing simply for the sake of putting words on the page like I didn't feel it didn't feel like she even really liked her characters I don't know how to explain it it just felt like she was kind of writing for not like writing for the fans but just kind of like writing for the memes I don't know so I just like wholeheartedly did not enjoy the last book wholeheartedly did not enjoy the last half of the third book. I understand why people like it. Like I understand the fandom aspect of it because again, she kind of made it easy for a fandom to grow from it. But I just felt like it was such a waste of my time. I would say just read the first and second one and then just like vaguely skim the third one. You don't, uh, you know, I understand why people like it though. So I'm not gonna totally hate on it, but definitely like it was a not, fun experience as a reader and so that's kind of why I don't want to read the fifth one right now is just because I have other books that I want to read and I'm putting them off in order to do this video and I feel like I just wasted a bunch of my time when I could have been reading good books so anyway that's what's going on I just wanted to check in and sorry if I'm not like coherent also oh yeah Flint and Jackson are definitely a thing there was like an epilogue chapter where he's like well I like I like Flint but his vampire boyfriend just died and his vampire boyfriend also happened to be my vampire best friend so we'll wait but other than that um nothing else to really say I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go drink some water and um try to not be ill so thank you for being along on this journey um all your messages on Instagram were really funny and um let me know your thoughts down below as well let me know what you think about book six are you gonna continue let me know okay see you guys next time